Hi, my name is Paula Mackey, and I'm the research coordinator for the Reproductive Sciences Department here at the Toronto Zoo. Uh, today I'm going to show you a little bit of behind-the-scenes work that we do here at the zoo for fighting high extinction. Um, we have a cryogenic storage lab where we store living cells, and that includes sperm, eggs, and embryos from all the animals that we have here on site. Um, we can collect them opportunistically, and also, actually, post-mortem, if an animal passes away unexpectedly, we collect cells from them and freeze them while they're still living in these cryogenic storage tanks and hold them here. So why do we do that? What it allows us to do is to prolong the longevity of that animal. So later on we can use apply what are called reproductive technologies, things that you would see in a human lab like in vitro fertilization, embryo transfer, and we can create offspring from those animals that are genetically uh, very rare and very valuable animals. So here at the Toronto Zoo, when, when you're, we're talking about valuable animals and endangered species, we never really truly let anything die. We try our best to keep things, save things for as long as we can, and saving valuable genetic material uh, here in our cryogenic storage. Thanks. So these are the tanks here where we store our live cells. These ones are for um, sperm, eggs, and embryos. And then we also have a larger tank uh, over here that we use for storing our cellular material. So if by chance an animal passes away and they're pre-pubertal, so they haven't actually produced any gametes, um, or if they were of an advanced age and perhaps those gametes are, are now not the best quality any longer, uh, we can still take a piece of tissue from the animal and grow cells in culture uh, and bank those down and freeze those down as well. And again, those are living cells that are stored in the, in the cryogenic storage tanks that we can use as a, a source of genetic material from the animal. So when I say cryogenic storage, it's not freezing like you would you nor normally do it at home in your normal freezer, which is about minus 20 or so. This is in liquid nitrogen. So these are already liquid nitrogen tanks. Here's our storage tank of nitrogen that I use to fill these tanks. And liquid nitrogen, when compressed and held in this way, refrigerated, is minus 196 degrees. So extremely cold. And at that temperature, there's no enzymatic activity, so no protein degradation. Basically, the cell just enters into a state of, of stasis, or it pauses, completely pauses and shuts down. In order for the cells to be able to handle going from room temperature down to liquid nitrogen like that, they have to have a special crop protectant or solution um, that we use to, to help protect those cells so that they can maintain at that temperature. And what crop protectant we use is species specific. So a lot of the work that we do here at the zoo is research on figuring out how best to cryogenically store cells from all of the species that we have here um, so that we can service as many and store as much as we possibly can. So the tanks here, I'll just show you a little bit about what a tank looks like and what, how we actually freeze these um, cells. So you can see the vapor that comes up. When you're going from minus 196 degrees to room temperature, they're going to evaporate. That's just normal. So every week we come in and we add new nitrogen to it to make sure that the cells stay in liquid um, and stay frozen and thus stay alive or viable as we say. So just to show you an example of what um, what these would look like. So in here you can see some straws inside that goblet. I'm just going to stick it back inside to make sure it stays cold. Those straws contain sperm and they contain enough sperm to do one artificial insemination for an animal. So there's actually about uh, 20 million sperm inside that single straw. And if we freeze it correctly, um, it's all viable, all living, or predominantly. We lose a few in the freezing process. Um, it's living cells that can be used to fertilize the DNA using reproductive technologies. So a couple of the reasons why a zoo would invest in that kind of technology. One is to obviously preserve all the genetic material we possibly can and, and make sure that we're capturing as much as we can from our rare and endangered species but also so that we can use applied reproductive technologies um, in order to propagate an animal. So we can get around things like behavioral incompatibilities. If we don't have a male or a female on site, we can use gametes. And I can ship a straw of sperm that small to another institution much easier than we can ship an entire animal. So reproductive technologies really allow zoos, um, especially in the modern world, to help capture and, and, and grow and, and keep these endangered uh, populations viable for as long as possible. Um, we akin it to like an insurance policy. We're here banking as much as we possibly can um, 
in order to do that. All right, so that was filling the liquid nitrogen tanks, um, which we have to do about once a week or so. The, again, because of minus 196 degrees, that liquid evaporates very quickly. So about once a week or so, we keep an eye on that tank. And even though we're closed, we are still coming in and keeping an eye on those cells. They are extremely rare, extremely valuable. And most of those animals that, uh, that the cells came from, they've since passed away. Um, and I wanted to, I just wanted to expand a little bit on, I was talking to you about artificial insemination and doing reproduct, using reproductive technologies and how we use these cells. And I wanted to highlight um, a project that we do here at the Toronto Zoo on wood bison. Uh, this is a picture actually, we have it hanging in the hallway here just outside of our reproductive physiology labs. Um, this is a picture of bison calves that were born using artificial insemination with sperm that had at the time been frozen in our tanks for 35 years. Uh, that sperm was caught for, or was taken from wild caught males in northern Canada. Uh, and at the time that these bison were born, that male had long, long passed away. But the sperm from that animal and the genetic material from that animal could be brought back into the population through reproductive technologies and through cryogenic storage of living material. And it's just one way that we are working behind the scenes um, to help support and save critically endangered species. So thank you so much for watching that. Uh, a little bit of the behind the scenes of what we do here at the zoo. And I hope you're staying safe at home. We miss you very much here and we look forward to welcoming you back when we're able to open our gates. See you soon. Take care.